Hello, I'm Richard Murphy, and I want to talk about something that we've only learned very recently. And that is that the cost of government borrowing is really falling very heavily. We learned this from the Office for Budget Responsibility. They published a review of the UK government's finances in July 2020. And in it, they showed that in the current year, that's 2020-21, as we call it in financial terms, the year ending 31st of March 2021, the actual cost of government borrowing will fall by £13.5 billion. Pounds. To put that in context, that's a saving of about £200 per person in the UK. So this is no small beer. Now, why has that happened? Because at the same time, they were saying that the UK government was, as they describe it, going to borrow more than £370 billion more this year than had been expected. And they're forecasting, by the way, that for each of the coming four years, the government is going to borrow more than £100 billion more than they expected. And in every one of those years, the cost of government borrowing is also going to fall over what was expected as recently as March 2020 in the budget that was published then. So there's a massive saving in the cost of government borrowing. Why is that? Well, first of all, it's because interest rates have fallen. The Bank of England has reduced the official interest rate to 0.1%. So if you put, if we put this in context, a thousand pounds into the bank on a deposit account paying 0.1% a year, you would get back one pound in interest a year. It's that small. So that has saved the government money. But there's something else that's also saved a substantial amount of money because the figures in question are net of the cost of quantitative easing. Now remember what quantitative easing is. We've done a video on it, so I recommend having a look at that. And what quantitative easing involves is the government buying back its own debt. Now in the current financial year, 2020-21, the government will buy back at least 300 billion pounds of its own debt out of a total in issue of around 2.3 trillion bringing the total that it owns to over £735 billion, or about a third of the total UK national debt. Now that means, quite simply, interest isn't being paid on this anymore. So far from government debt imposing some massive burden upon us that is unaffordable, which therefore requires us to react in panic, to cut debt, to cut the cost of debt, Actually, the cost of debt is falling anyway. We don't need to panic about the size of the debt. But there's something else as well. I looked at some data from a rather obscure organisation which is part of the UK Treasury, and that's the Debt Management Office. I would argue that it's misnamed because it isn't really managing debt, it's managing savings, which is what government bonds are. They're an instrument for saving, they're not an instrument for debt. But that's a side issue. I looked at their plans to issue new debt in the coming year. And the government can currently issue debts for a period of more than 30 years at interest rates of well under 1%. That means that they're issuing a bond now which will not be repaid until sometime in the 2050s, which candidly in my case means I probably won't be around at the time it's repaid. And the interest rate is around 0.6%. So in other words, six pounds for every a thousand pounds saved in interest per year. Now that's minuscule. 0.6% is less than the planned inflation rate, which we hope to be 2% over that period. In other words, you're going to be losing money by saving in this bond and getting almost no interest as a result. That's the price that people are willing to pay for the safety that the government can supply because it can never go bust because it creates our money. Literally, that power to create money has a price attached to it, which is low interest. But my point is critical. We can borrow money over an incredibly long period of time, longer than 30 years, longer than most domestic mortgages, at 
Now, why then aren't we using that opportunity to first of all refinance all existing debt, which costs more, and secondly, to finance the investment that we need for the sake of building the sustainable economy for our future. The cost of money is now so low that we are absolutely full of opportunities to decide on how we want to create a better world. And yet the government talks about reducing debt instead. They've got their priorities wrong. They should be looking at the positives, not the negatives. They should be looking at the upsides of how we use this opportunity rather than saying it's something that we must avoid. I believe they've made a fundamental economic mistake. And that's one of the reasons why we create these videos, because I want to talk about these basic points in economics. If you found that interesting, there's going to be lots more around this theme over time. Please click the subscribe button below and you'll get more daily, we hope. And follow me on Twitter at Richard J. Murphy and follow my blog, Tax Research UK. Thanks for watching.